this week we're talking about the Joey Gladstone show <laughs> out of control. So check your mailbox because you're listening to a kind of garbage telesitting podcast. Welcome everyone to Tell Us Sitting. Today we're talking about Out of Control, the male episode. Uh, not to be confused with like the gender male, but like the, the male as in the mailbox. I'm Adam Bishop and with me as always is... Cody Andrews. Cody, I have a question for you. How much, did you, how much did you fucking hate this show? <laughs> uh, I didn't hate it. It kind of answered a kind. It answered a few questions for me that I didn't really know I had. Like it was um what what's his what's what's Joey Gladstone's actual name again? Uh, it, he's a comedian named Dave Coulier. Dave Coulier. Dave Coulier was like really skinny at one point. <laughs> well, he's like super young in this. Oh yeah. But I think what I kind of think is funny is like I didn't know where the hell Dave Coulier came from. Like I remember him from Full House, and I also remember him from uh it wasn't america's funniest home videos no that's bob saget that because that was bob saget but there was another there was like another home video show that dave coulier was the host of which i always kind of thought was weird the fact that him and bob saget both hosted (laughs) um shows like that Uh uh-huh and that's that's how i know dave coulier i don't really know him from too much else I don't think anybody does, to be honest. Yeah, but he's, I mean, he's popular enough. So I think it's funny to kind of see like an old Dave Coulier thing where you're like, oh, this is, this is what he did. Yeah, according to um, Wikipedia, it was his second role where his number, his first role was from Scooby and Scrappy-Doo and he played just additional voices because I guess he's predominantly a voice actor, if anything. And when you watch him, even in this, he does voices one of his skills as an actor would be the fact that like you can just put a camera on him and he kind of has like those 80s improv skills yeah and that really that really gets highlighted when Dave Coulier makes a pizza which is a segment (laughs) of of this show which is just him holding pepperonis to his eyes and singing and it's like yeah I mean if you want to hold somebody's attention because it's like even right now I'm struggling to describe it. And it's like the worst thing in the world because it's it's dead air. Like you don't want you don't want someone who's unwatchable on TV showing you how to do something or watching how to do something. I feel so bad for the like the the cook there. The I'm gonna assume he's the owner. Carlos. Oh, Carlos. <laughs> it's just him like with his hands over his like ears, his head, his eyes, his mouth. He's like, what is what is David doing? He's Oh my! I, I when I watched it, I was like, no, no, it's just him looking at the camera, telling a joke, and going. <laughs> uh, do we have any more dough? No more dough. Got a buck. <laughs> okay, well. Yeah. So I mean, that's kind of it. I. I <laughs> so the other thing that I didn't really know is I've seen enough, and it's kind of like meta, but I've seen enough references on TV shows about shows like out of control where mm-hmm. it's like i wouldn't call it like a sketch comedy show but it's like uh i don't know what would you call it it's like a it's mockumentary segment based kids show it's the weird thing is this was on nickelodeon like this is a nickelodeon original yeah <laughs> where like i don't like, i never watched it and, and i know there's other shows like this like what well, there was You can't do that on television. Yep. And then there was Schoolhouse Rock and there was like Electric Company. Yeah, this is. But I never watched any. Like, I'm I'm aware that like those shows existed for a brief period of time in like the late 80s, early 90s. Mm -hmm. But I, I was too young that like I didn't watch them. And I don't like they're not part of like my frame of reference for like media. But I understand what they are. So like actually watching one, it like blows my mind that like there's people that are like I don't know six seven eight years older than me 
that were just like, oh my God, I loved Out of Control. Because like me watching this, I'm like, what the fuck am I watching? This is just another pick where you're like, I didn't know this existed. I didn't need to know existed, but I have so many questions because it's so fucking weird. It is. And it's almost to the point where like, it's, it's almost meta in the fact that it's like winking to the audience where it's like, like, I don't know, like, has, is this, was this made and is this self-aware enough that like, they're, they know that there's two people watching this show. There's kids and then stone teenagers. Yeah. Like, I, I don't know. Like, maybe they're just like, no, it was kids. Like, everything on the show was entirely dedicated to kids. But then it has, like, that Monty Python animation, like, that, like, cutout stop motion animation to, like, do all these, like, weird segments and pranks. Yeah, it's, 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 it's a bu- weird ass show. <laughs> it's so bizarre. It starts with, um, I guess, the... Like there's multiple segments in it. the way the show starts is an announcer talking about like your host and I can't even remember what the male joke was. It's like oh it's like America's like coolest male or something, and then a male lady a male lady runs out, and then Joey has to like interrupt her. He's like oh fuck I'm gonna call him Joey every single time. That's okay. Um, David Cou- Coulier Cou- David Dave Coulier. <laughs> there's a U in there. Is it silent Coulier? Yeah, well, I, I was. It's like a French last name. Okay, I was gonna say, is it Coulier? <laughs> <laughs> I Dave just can't. Cooler. We just know that Adam can't read. But yeah, the, the joke for the opening is that the male lady says like, "No rain, nor snow, no nor hail," and then she says mustard, and all the things just pour on Dave, and he's just like, Ugh. yeah. And then she's about to say an anvil, and that doesn't happen. Did you like his very eighties like? tan suit with like a string tie and the sleeves of his suit jacket or like his sport coat are rolled up he looked very nice (laughs) it's like the most 80s anyone has ever looked it's like amazing my favorite um segment from this from this episode which was the male episode which i'm gonna check really fast because i never said this is episode number 18 of 25 for the series slash season because there's only one season yeah, but my favorite segment was the um, the pizza scene with with um, Dave, where he picks up the dough and he's like, oh, duh, 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 and he stretches it and he just hucks it across the room. He's like, oh no, there's no more dough. What are you doing? He takes off his chef hat and just flattens it. And he's like, hey, you can use this, and then he makes a pizza out of it. But he's being such a fucking asshole, throwing shit everywhere, and then I, <laughs> he doesn't he doesn't pop it in the oven because like. I don't know. The only thing I can say is when he flattened the hat to make a piece, I was like, yeah, it looks like dough. I can see this. This is this is fine. But when he's just like, well, you put some cheese on it and like he's just making a mess. Well, like that. That's what I mean. It's like he's like, I'm going to watch Carlos make a pizza. And then instead of just quietly watching a man make pizza, you're watching Dave Coulier do voiceovers right beside a man making pizza so he's like onions oh you're 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 making me cry carlos what do you got there green pepper and then it's just dead air because there's no jokes about green pepper then he's like and then uh there's the pepperoni (laughs) it's like oh my god oh the segment how long the segment is would be shorter than how much it's going to take carlos to clean up his back room from the fucking mess that was made he he <laughs> threw a lot of cheese around you're not wrong oh it's uh but i think just i don't know it's it's like an interesting concept for a show because like what's the gimmick that they run a tv station i don't even know where they're supposed to be from what i read it's supposed to be a show within a show so like they know they're in a show but it's also a show yeah because The one girl was like two of the characters were reporters. And then one of the characters was like uh, a tech guy. And I'm assuming Dave's supposed to be the host of the show. So yeah, it's, it's like a show within a show. So you're watching them talking about like, oh, we can't do this now. I have to like, I can't stay and open all my mail. I have to go do my report on roller coasters, which that was my favorite segment. Was it? What does it have to do with mail? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> nothing it, it, it has to do with the show yeah like the the so the segment for the show was like he's like i have a report that i have to go film about amusement parks and then it was just him sitting on like really cheap ass like those old uh coin operated machines that would be like inside zellers yeah that's he, all he, he did just, he didn't even yeah, go on just actual roller coasters he went on amusement rides that yeah you pop your dollar in and your kid goes Wee! 
yeah which that was the whole like gimmick was he's like oh i love roller coasters and he's like let's give this one a spin and he starts screaming and he's riding something that's like you're supposed to put like a three-year-old in that character his name was hern i fucking hate yeah. him he gives my favorite character waldo his bad mail because Hearn gets three pieces of mail. One is a letter from his mom, like saying, like, you owe me five bucks. The next yeah. letter was, I can't remember what, what the context was, but it was a box and gloves that punches him in the face. It was from a guy Hearn did a report on and he called the guy the biggest jerk in the world. <laughs> so then the guy mailed a spring loaded boxing glove to Hearn. So when which he is opens, great. Yeah. When he opens the box, he gets punched in the nose to which <laughs> Hearn goes, my nose. <laughs> like just does not like he should have been like oh my nose but he just like the boxing glove like boops him on the nose and then Hearn just goes it hit my nose <laughs> and next, that's it and it's like it's next like, box right. well in the third box was um was it the IRS was like coming to arrest he was being arrested for something it was yeah it was something about like unpaid bills and then yeah. he's like Waldo you take this yeah he's like uh you take this one Waldo it's uh it's an interesting show that it's like a relic of its time for oh, like, yeah. how do you make live action kids TV and like in a studio and it's like, just make it segment based, have five improv based comedians or actors, put them in silly suits and just let them improv their way through goofy ass segments. And then you know take a portable camera and go like go down the street to an amusement park and film there go down the street to a pizza place and film there like I get it it's I think it's more like we kind of talked about this with the the Canadian show Uh (laughs) uh-oh where it's just like how do you hit that formula of like we can crank these episodes out as fast as we can I feel like this would be one that they did crank out as fast as they could oh for sure because like yeah this definitely has the feeling of like how do we film 25 episodes of this and then air it Tuesdays at noon on Nickelodeon? And then it's like there, there's there's something to fill the airtime up with. It kind of reminded me of, I think that premise is pretty funny of doing the show within a show. I've always been a fan of that like genre of like television shows. I just think they could have had, I don't know, me there had to have been a way to like get a little more creative with it maybe it was geared it was geared like for little kids I don't know I don't know because there was there was even a segment where there's this little girl teaching adults how to be students or like I guess teaching them skills um when I read on the Wikipedia page it says there's a segment where a kid teaches adults um how to learn different topics that kids know and this one was teaching how to pass a note in class. So you get yeah. like just this classroom full of like idiot adults being like, is this how you pass a note? And it, this is a kid's show. When, when you see these different things, like everything interests kids. If Hearn went on a roller coaster ride for actual like massive roller coasters, the kids might be like, oh, that's scary. But no, he's sitting on those little kid ones and he's they're just like, oh, that yeah. looks like it'd be fun. Yeah, which I don't know. I'm trying to think of like the other shows that are like this. And maybe they were geared towards more of a teenage audience. And it was like, how do we make a show like this, but like age it down another age demographic? Yeah, I know you mentioned um, you can't is it you can't say or you can't do that on television, whatever the name is. Yeah. And there's a million other shows that were like that. I get yeah. like they all they all like cease to exist. Oh, I know one show that was like that. It's called The Amanda Show starring Amanda Bynes. Was that like that? When she was like 10. Yeah, she had her her own show where she would dress up like as an old lady, kind of like Ernest would. And yeah. she would have skits in it. And she's like, that's the Amanda Show. Woo! And at the end, she would say bye to everybody. Yeah, like that. There's a million shows like this. Mm -hmm. I just they all exist. Like they're all completely out of my like frame of reference for TV shows. (laughs) Like I've never seen any of them, but I'm well aware of what they are. So to put in context, the last episode ended six was well, the last episode aired six days before the day i was born <laughs> yeah so we've we've never seen this like i've never seen this and this was just something like hey let's let's do this for the podcast it's weird nobody talks about it 
if you mention this to anybody, I doubt anybody's gonna be like, I remember that show, unless maybe no. like older yeah. people. But I want to know the person who starts the petition and be like, we need to get out of control on DVD or Blu-ray. Like, we, I need this released. I, I can almost guarantee that the masters of this do not exist. They, like, think... they've been long destroyed. <laughs> well, long is... destroyed. Yeah, I don't know if Nickelodeon keeps. No, Nickel... if it's Nickelodeon, Nickelodeon doesn't have the original masters for Rocco's Modern Life, which was a 90s TV show. Yeah. Even the DVDs released for Rocco's is sourced from TV airings that like stations still had copies where they're like, yo, can we get copies? That's kind of like an interesting, you could go down that if you'd like, but that's like a whole interesting genre too, if you want. And it's called lost media. Oh yeah. And it's, it's, it's essentially things that were filmed or things that were aired and then they only lasted so many episodes or it was only one season. And then, uh, and either the studio or the channel goes under, the masters are like lost to time, which is, it's pretty wild to think. Yeah, for any listener, like if you're, I don't even know what you would call it, like crypto history or whatever, but it's a really interesting subject to read up on because a lot of it is there's no, there's no physical media to go back on to like research or talk about or review you're almost going by like talking to people who have like a collective memory of a show or a cartoon that was aired and then never seen again. Yeah, I think one of the most famous ones that everybody knows about is Doctor Who that the BBC recorded over the Masters with, I don't even know what it was. Yeah. So they're, they're still asking people like, hey, if you have these episodes recorded from TV, like, please, we're looking for these ones because there's ones that are never going to be found. Well, was it, the t- was it the TV or the radio show? The TV show, because they have the audio okay. for some of the episodes, which they've taken the audio and then just animated like a cartoon yeah. for, for the episodes being like, but we would love to get the video. And I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure sh- there, I think there's lost episodes of the radio show that they've, they have scripts of them and they've like gone back and re-recorded them just for like prosper like posterity's sake, I guess it's called. Can you imagine people being upset? Well, that's not the original person reading it. It's like, oh, come on guys. I remember being a kid and like, you'd see a cartoon and I'm like, this is the greatest cartoon in the world. And it was like six episodes and that was it. Yeah. And you basically realized you just watched the pitch of a cartoon that was sent into like YTV or Fox or uh, UPN or any of those channels. And you're watching so much of it. And then it was like the, the station was just or the channel was just like, yeah, we're not picking this up like we aired it it didn't test well it didn't it you know it didn't have strong repeat viewings or whatever it is whatever metric they use to measure how successful a show is and they just like walk away from it with the crazy thing about that is i remember my brother and i watching my pet monster when we were super little and like we would watch it whenever it was on and then i eventually bought the dvd set for his kids um like i think it was a christmas present and when I bought yeah. it, I looked at him like 13 episodes, complete series. I'm like, we fucking sh- used to watch this shit all the time. It's only 13 episodes. Yeah, you're you're literally, yeah, you don't realize it, but they're all aired out of order. My parents were probably like, oh, there's fucking, like, our kids are stupid. They're not going to realize they're watching the same episodes <laughs> over and over. And we didn't. So we were pretty yes. dumb. <laughs> yeah, I remember, I, I remember watching, what was one I used to watch? I remember Beetle watching juice? the... I remember Beetlejuice. I remember watching the American version of what was it called? The Smoggies? No, no, Techno Man. Oh, what the fuck is Techno Man? I it was called like Techno Man in America, and then I think in like Japan because it was originally like an anime. It was oh, okay. called it was called Tekka Man Blade, mm-hmm. and it was about this guy who like can go into like this giant insect suit, and then it was just like huge fight scenes. And I remember watching like, I can't even remember which station it was, but there was one station that aired it, but they only ever aired like the first 10 episodes and then it never got picked up. And then years later I I had found it and it was like that, that was actually one of the shows that like first introduced me because I think I saw that before I even saw Dragon Ball Z. So that kind of introduced me to like the whole concept when I was a kid of like, there's shows out there that are like 
they're edited or like they're they're not even recorded in English. You know what I mean? Yeah, I think my first one was Astro Boy. Rem- remembering, I remember watching yeah. it and asked my t- dad, it's like, how come he's not wearing a shirt? Like literally being disturbed that this little boy is running around shirtless everywhere for some reason. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's, it's definitely weird. But it, yeah, like it's just interesting to see like a show like this that's I guess was I don't know you said Nickelodeon made this show yeah it's it's a Nickelodeon original wow yeah I mean it's they have a studio I guess like why not try to film something when I was growing up I I didn't really see so many of these I'm aware of what they are I didn't really see so many of these shows the ones that were popular when I was a kid were it's like kids game shows yeah where there was like, uh, uh oh, and then the video arcade top ten. Oh, I can tell you what my favorite was. I think it was on PBS. Do you know? Do you know what it is? That should give you a clue. No. Okay, I'll do the song. PBS. PBS. Um, this is this is one of the songs from it, and they had an acapella group, which might give it away as well. No, I'm trying to think. The guys go around. They go bum bum. Boom, 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 and then they come up. And they go, "Where in the world is Carmen?" Oh, <laughs> I was so stupid when I was a kid. I didn't even realize Carmen San Diego was like supposed to be an educational show. Oh, it was fucking great. Yeah, like I didn't, I, but this, I think I saw the cartoon. Oh, the cartoon's beginning is fucking amazing. Yeah, anybody, if you haven't watched it, the song is so good. <laughs> I had seen the cartoon and I was just like, I don't get it. And then I think years later I saw and I'm like, oh, it's a game show. It's a geography show. That's what it's teaching yes. people. Geography. I know. And like, then, like, wait a minute. I'm learning something. Stuff. Yeah, it was an amazing show. The cartoon show was great. And then I, there was a. The live action game you... show for kids is amazing as well. <laughs> I remember the live action game show. And then what was. There are kids running around like on a globe on the ground. Yeah, you had to, you like, had to run lamp to posts. Yeah. Yeah. Do you remember at your elementary school in your computer lab? Do you remember computer labs? You think my elementary school had a computer lab? <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure your elementary school every, every got donated. Class... <laughs> <laughs> got donated some shit computers. I, okay, I, I went to an elementary school that's no longer around. We had one computer in each classroom, and it was like a Macintosh that ran at ease as its operating system. Yeah, but do you remember the Carmen San Diego video game? We we all we had was um Da Vinci's. I was gonna say Quest. Some Da Vinci. <laughs> <laughs> we had the we had the we had the computer game version of Da Vinci's War, where you, <laughs> you, you had to get drinks to uh, Anna Nicole Smith. You had to keep her loose enough. You had to keep Anna Nicole Smith lucid enough that you could get a take out of her on the movie and Here get Anna, her just, naked at the same time. Yeah. Just have a sip of this, Anna. It was how, like a... <laughs> how long do you want this shower scene? <laughs> it was like a mist game, but it was about Da Vinci. I don't remember what it was called. There was a Carmen San Diego video game where it had like, I don't know, 100 or 200 questions or whatever. And it was just like, Carmen San Diego just stole this. And then she left this as a clue. Uh, and it would be a clue for like where she was going to strike next. Oh, okay. And then you had to like piece the clues together. And then it's like, you have all the clues. Where do you think her final heist is going to be? And it was like, yeah, exactly. It was just like, oh, she's, it's, it's Rome. She's going to Rome. The computer game we always played in elementary school was called Spectre. Do you know what it is? It's like this um, vector tank game. No, that sounds awesome. It was on the Super Nintendo as well. But what would happen is everyone would always want to get the high score. So like you would play as long as possible. Yeah. And then... I don't remember how we figured it out, but there's a level select mode where you have to type in a password to get to a certain level. So it's more or less kids just like slam their faces against the keyboard trying to get a random yeah. level. And then eventually we found out um, what like one of the codes to get really far, like level 100, which no one ever made it to. And when you shoot one guy, they were worth so many points that you, if you killed one person, you were like the number one high score. And it said like your initials and what level you were on. Yeah. So that was the big one for us. And yeah, once we figured out how to get to a far level, 
by level skipping. It just, it ruined that game for everyone and no one wanted to play it. We also played Cross Country Canada, which was another geography. It was a Canadian geography based game where you were a truck driver and you would get like, you'd pick up trailers and it would be a hint for where you needed to go. Okay. And I, I'm trying to remember I'm, and it was goofy because I think what you picked up, you had to like drive it to where they made it. Oh my God. So it's like, it's like you got a trailer full of nickel. Where in Canada is it faint? Is, is there fa- world famous nickel mines? And you're like, Sudbury? Oh, I was about to like, say New Brunswick. Where's the no. big nickel? Is that in Sudbury? Sudbury. Fuck. I, I don't so know. That, it's all right. Geography. Well, you would you would be the world's worst worst truck driver. <laughs> um, so you would have to drive and do this. But I remember we played that game forever and no one could ever beat it like no one could even get to the next town and what was killing us was one of the commands you had to type into the game was fasten seatbelt oh and if you didn't fasten your seatbelt your truck crashed like almost immediately and you also needed to type in slow down turn on headlights, turn on wiper blades. And if you didn't do that, as soon as the sun went down or as soon as it started raining, you just like basically crashed. And when you crashed, it was like game over. And I just remember like we'd play it and someone would figure it out. It's like, it's like, where would you go for lobster or or whatever? And it's like, oh, I'm going to go to St. John. (laughs) It's like, I'm going to go to St. John's. And it's like, yeah. And then it's like drive to St. John's. And it's like, you're in Saskatchewan, head east or oh. west. And it's like east. And it's like, you're on your way. Oh, you crashed. Game well, over. And it was like, oh, okay. If, if it was like head east, I'm like, wait, which way am I facing now? Am I facing north or south? Because that that, that, that changes what my answer would be. Yeah, fair enough. So I don't even know where I'm going with this. Now I'm just like remembering all the shit from when I was a kid. Yeah, they no, that we were talking about the kids game shows. I think the kids game shows are like a little bit more content you can get out of them. I think they'd be even better now since kids are are apparently fucking stupid and all they do is sit on their phones. So by making them actually think you just have a show making fun of kids, which would be amazing. Yeah, it just blows my mind that they never brought a O back. Well, like I think like we said on the last episode where you're like, you can't get away with this anymore. You can't, but there's got to be a way to like safely do it. Because it blows my mind. Like, if you had a TV channel and you're just looking for, like, shit to air in the middle of the day, like, all you need is a studio and then a bunch of kids to come in on field trips. And it's like, there you go. That's your show. Yeah. And instead of having um, an out of, like, an out of venue where you have the kids doing obstacle courses through hay, you would just have another extra round. But we need to bring back, uh-oh, um, just checks TV. Do they have like public access? Can we do that? Is that something we can do? Uh, Will's, they're called, used... uh, Will's called, oh no. <laughs> there used to be a CH public access channel around here, but I'm pretty sure it went under. Cause I, I think it's say, all- Kojiko definitely did have public access. Yeah. One of my favorite TV shows of all time Wayne's was World. a public- no, it was a public access show. It was li- it was it literally just was Wayne's World. It was it was called JR Diggs, which you know what? That's the next thing we're gonna watch. I'm gonna oh. see if I can find an episode of JR Diggs, which was a Canadian cable access show of this like weird comedian who lived at home. And uh he had a cable access show, which was like a talk show that he also like had segments shot for, and then he came back later. He he came back later and he had a show where he helped people make short movies and then he would just air their short films on his show. And it was really good. Well, that'll be next episode. Yeah, next. If we can find it. Yes. Let's get into rankings. I'll start first. This show is a piece of shit. It's it's not horrible. It's a product of its time. It was okay, but this will be my my new number six, which is at the bottom. So that falls just under the guys next door. And I'm going to recap since um, we don't have a posting for the top tens, but I will post them on our Twitter and Instagram feeds. My number one right now is The Odyssey. Number two is Clerks, the Animated Series. Number three is Uh-Oh!, Number four is Kings. Number five is the guys next door. Whoa. Whoa. And then number six is out of control. <laughs> I thought this show was an absolute pile of shit. So with that, <laughs> I'm going to rank it. 
above clerks. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, this is my new number five. So I put Kings, Odyssey, uh oh, uh, Guys Next Door. I think Guys Next Door was like this, but better. Yeah, I, I absolutely agree with that. Like, that's it, it was like a, it was a sketch based show. I still don't understand like the age group for this show. <laughs> like, if it was for like really slow kids. Oh my God. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not a very fast show. No, but it was like. <laughs> None of the set, everything was a joke. That was the other thing we need to get into. Everything on the show was a joke or a parody. So kids have to be old enough to understand parody that out of control was uh, parodying like Sesame Street and shows like that that would like teach kids because like all the lessons in this show were jokes. Imagine a kid actually watching this to be educated. Oh no. Yeah. So like everything's a joke. So kids have to be old enough or smart enough to understand that to even get it. And that makes me worry. Like, well, if you're playing to like kids that age, like this is dumb. Yeah. So our next episode is for telesitting. What was it called again? Jay, I'll, I, we'll talk and I'll tell you about the amazing Canadian cable access television host, J.R. Diggs. I hope we can find that. Okay. Yeah. With that said, thanks for listening. Check out um, a kind of garbage.com that has all of our links on it. Email us at a kind of garbage at gmail.com for any like questions, comments, concerns, <laughs> and visit us, visit, <laughs> visit us on Twitter and Instagram, both at a kind of garbage, Facebook at a kind of garbage pod, and check out the Patreon for a patreon.com forward slash a kind of garbage. Cody, do you know what we're doing on the Patreon episode? What's that? It was Justice League, so you better get ready. Finally, you can find myself on Twitter personally at Presto Adam and with Dan Martin, Chris and Chris on Hate Kids Comics Radio Show Friday nights at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Trent Radio 92.7 CFFF FM. Cody, where can people find you? Here on this podcast and on Twitter at a sync word. Do you post on Twitter? <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> you're there though. So if you at him, like you're going to respond. With that, I'm Adam Bishop. And I'm Cody Andrews. And don't watch this show. <laughs> Out of control. Don't watch out of control. <laughs> <laughs>
to be vaccinated. He's also doing it now where the troublemakers get vaccinated fast too, because he said that they're going to have a priority for people in hot spots to get vaccinated, which means if you fuck up your city and your region, guess what? We'll vaccinate you guys really fast. So I'm hoping, I'm hoping that we do that here. But that's the other thing. So he said that. And then he also said um, there is a, and then other groups are saying the biggest group that's transferring or spreading COVID is people who have been deemed essential workers. So people who don't really have a choice but to continue to go to work and expose themselves. So now he's saying he recognizes the fact that those people, which are primarily younger people who don't qualify for like the at-risk vaccine. So they're now saying maybe some of these younger people should be vaccinated, which... Oh, Doug... Yeah, it's it's all over the road and it's a lot of people are fighting over it. And yeah, it's well, it's a gr- great time. His my biggest takeaway from his press conference from today was a uh, was a brilliant quote, which I which I have a picture on my phone to send to people of his face with his new quote, which is hope is on the horizon. Ooh. Really, Doug? Yeah, like that's like my problem is my work has stayed open this entire time and I've been deemed an essential worker which I still kind of partly question, but because of my health and age group, I basically qualify under Doug Ford's rule as I will be the last person to get the vaccine. So it's kind of like, okay, like I have no excuse. They're not giving me any excuses. I have to go out and continue to work, but I I, I will be the last person to get vaccinated, which to me is kind of like, how does that make, like, how does that make sense to anyone? But I don't know this it just when you think it's like it's getting better or going to end or like someone's figured something out they just keep fucking up they find new and creative ways to drop the ball let's just say right now thanks doug thanks dougie